Blue Beetle. Sweeping down upon the underworld to smash gangland comes the friend of the unfortunate, enemy of criminals. A mysterious, all-powerful character, a problem to the police. But a crusader for law. In reality, Dan Garrett, a rookie patrolman, loved by everyone but suspected by none of being the Blue Beetle. As the Blue Beetle, he hides behind a strange mask and a suit of impenetrable blue chain armor, flexible as silk but stronger than steel. Today's episode of the Blue Beetle is entitled Blasting the Dynamite Ring. A band of desperate underworld characters has started a reign of terrorism throughout the city. Their motive is wholesale burglary. Will they succeed in forcing the authorities to accede to their demands? Can they successfully defy the forces of law and order? Or will the Blue Beetle checkmate their efforts and bring their leader to justice? As our story opens, Patrolman Dan Garrett, a rookie cop who operates as the Blue Beetle, and stopped for a little early morning chat with his friend and advisor, Dr. Franz, before reporting for duty. Well, Danny, what assignment has the commissioner given you in this new drive? I don't know yet. I hope it's something exciting. <laughs> You'll probably get your wish. You and Manigan always get plenty of action. What do you suppose is back of these dynamiting, Doc? Three this week already. Mm, very strange. Fantastic, in fact. What can these racketeers hope to gain? Blame if I know. Looks as if they were trying to scare the authorities into meeting some exorbitant demand of that. But surely the police can apprehend the ringleaders. Believe me, if I get a chance, I'll run into her. If I can't do it as Dan Garrett, I'll do it as the Blue Beetle. Oh, what's that? Sounded like an explosion over on the west side. Someone's up front in your store. I'll go see. Excuse me. Oh, hello, Doc. Is Dan Garrett here? Oh, hello, Officer Hannigan. Yes, Danny's here. He, he was just... Oh, what's up, Hannigan? Me and you have been assigned to the west side to investigate them explosions. I thought I heard one just now. That's right. Come on, I got the police car outside. Let's get going. Okay. So long, Doc. Let's go, Hannigan. That furniture factory that blew up. Furniture? Yeah. I heard somebody say it was bombed. That's the fourth this week. Come on, Lanigan. Let's see if we can help. There may still be some people in that burning building. Stand up here, me lad. I'm going to search the cellar first. Take it easy down there, Danny. The floor's overhead may cave in any minute. I'll have to take that chance. If somebody down here in the cellar is either dead or overcome by smoke, Give me a lift. I can't get down to you, Danny. The fire's between us now. Can you throw your coat down to me? Well, that's right. Wait a minute. Here it comes. You got it? Okay. I'm going to bring this guy up on my back. I'm using your coat as a hood. You better wait until I can get the fireman in here with the hoses. There's no time for that. I think I can make it alone. I'm coming down, Danny. Wait for no, me. No, mannequin. No use both of us risking our lives. You stay there and grab me when I come up those stairs. Here I come. Take it easy, Danny. Steady now, boy. You're almost up. Don't make it snappy. The floor's giving way. Here, here's the hand. I got you. Look out, Danny. <laughs> He'll be all right. Look, he's opening his eyes. I sure is a brave cop. Yeah. Uh, Danny, Danny, are you all right? Good night. Get the old man out there. Oh, you did that, boy. Thanks to you. I didn't do nothing. You've done it all. Manigan, if you hadn't been there, give me a pull that have collapsed right at the head of the floor. Well, well, no. You'll be all right after a rest and plenty of fresh air in your lungs. Here comes the ambulance for the old man you saved. 
Why don't you take a ride along with them? Maybe they'll give you a bed and a good meal, too, at the hospital. So I think I'll take the ride. That bed and meal can wait. I want to talk to that old man when he regains consciousness. He may give me a clue to that dynamite again. be able to furnish a clue as to the dynamite gang? Will Danny continue his investigation as Patrolman Dan Garrett or as the Blue Beetle? Let's look in on the mayor of the city to see if we can discover what is back of these mysterious explosions. Telegram for you, sir. No, thanks. Now, wait a minute, George. There may be an answer. Yes, sir. Hmm. If you don't have electricity shut off throughout the city tonight... Something unpleasant will happen to you or your family. Sign the octopus. Say, what is this, a joke? If it is, someone has a perverted sense of humor. Why, this is preposterous. I never heard of anything so brazen. Well, what are you going to do, sir? Get me the commissioner on the phone. Yes. Uh, get the police commissioner on the phone. The mayor calling. Thank you. Uh, you better have a bodyguard, Your Honor. Not for me, but for my boy. Since his mother died, he's had nobody but me to look after him. Hello, hello. Hello, Commissioner? Yes. It's Arnold the Mayor calling. Here you are, sir. Now, hello, Commissioner. Hello, Mr. Mayor. What's on your mind? I want to read you a telegram I just received a moment ago. Now, where is it, George? Oh, thanks. <clears throat> now, listen to this, Commissioner. If you don't have electricity shut off throughout the city tonight, something unpleasant will happen to you or your family. And it's signed, The Octopus. Uh, that's bad. Who's The Octopus? As far as we can discover... He's a power in the underworld. Our best men have been working secretly to track him down. But so far, we've had no success. Well, I want you to assign one of your best men to guard my son. I'll assign Mike Mannigan on the job. He's the best I have. Good. I know him. Well, what about you? You should have a bodyguard. Oh, never mind me. I can take care of myself. It's my son I'm worried about. Well, let him be taken care of, Mr. Mayor. Okay, Commissioner. As soon as you issued the necessary orders, I wish you'd drop over to my office. I'd like to discuss a plan of action to checkmate the Optimus and his gang. In the meantime, Dan Garrett has talked with the old man whom he saved from the burning building. He learns that just before the explosion, the old man, who was the janitor of the factory, saw a bearded man with a link disappearing up the stairs just outside the boiler room. Danny decides to keep an eye out for a bearded man with a limp. We next find him in the little apothecary shop of his friend and advisor, Dr. Franz. Then what do you make of it, Danny? I think it's a diabolical plan of wholesale robbery, backed by terrorism and blackmail. But I don't understand. How could any gang of thieves hope As I see it, the mastermind of this gang has a well-thought-out plan. First, his unholy crew terrorizes the city by a series of explosions. Yes? Then they plan to suddenly plunge the city into darkness one night. And while the blackout is on, they'll systematically rob jewelry stores, banks, and fur storage plants. Well, what makes you think that? The mayor got a telegram today warning him that unless he ordered the city's power supply shut off, something unpleasant will happen to him or his family. But that's preposterous. I never heard of such unmitigated nerve. These men are desperate characters. And their chief is a cold-blooded fiend. Uh, what's the mayor doing about it? He's talked with the commissioner of police. The commissioner assigned Manigan to guard the mayor's young son. He's also ordered every known gang hangout in the city raided. Every racketeer, big or small, is to be arrested. Brought in for questions. And what are you going to do? I'm going to put on my blue beetle armor. Then take a little trip down to the municipal power plant. I have a peculiar feeling the blue beetle will come to grips with some of that gang tonight. <laughs> Out into the night, fed the Blue Beetle in his super dynamic speedster to save the city's power plant from destruction and prevent wholesale burglary throughout the city. From another point, a fast motor car filled with dark visaged men is speeding toward the same destination. Will they meet, or will one outspeed the other to prevent or commit a crime? As the Blue Beetle nears his destination, he sees another car pull up in front of the power plant. That's a suspicious-looking car there. Hmm, several men are getting off. Tough-looking bunch. 
There's one with a beard and a limp. That's my man, all right. And there's the watchman coming up to me. All right, boys. All right, now make it nothing. Right in here. And be sure to suck me hard and tie me up so I won't be suspected of being in on this. Don't worry about that, Pop. We'll fix it for you. Well, here's the dynamo room. And here's the sock. Okay. Tie him up and put him over there in the corner. Come on, Slid Eye. Give me a lift with this bozo. Okay, Gibby. Here we go. Hey, Gibby. What did you do with that sledgehammer? Back of you. I'll be able to help you after we stop this. The blue beetle. Yes. The blue beetle. Hey, there's the blue beetle. Give him a longer leg. Put down that sledge or I'll blast you. You and who else? I'll mow you down with this sledgehammer. Hold up, you guys. Are you liable to nick me? I can handle this mug. Hello. Let me see you handle this one. <laughs> Go on. Empty your guns, you fools. You can't injure the blue beetle. Now I'm coming after you, rats back there. Come on, let's beat it, Slid Eye. No, we gotta fight it out. You know the octopus. This blue beetle's only a guy in a masquerade custom. Let's get him. Give me, give me that wrench. Here we go. Give me that wrench, Slid Eye. Here is this blue old red on the blue. Your aim is bad, Slid Eye. You should have ducked my left first. But my aim ain't, blue beetle. Oh, gotcha that time, blue beetle. Come on, Muggsy, I got him. I got the blue beetle. Yeah, good work, Gimpy. That's tossing a hammer, all right. Yeah, you got him right in the eye. Boy, he certainly packs an awful wallop in that left of his. Yeah, you sure got a lump in your jaw. Hey, what do we do with him? He ain't dead. Tie him up and take him out to the island after we wreck this place. The octopus will take care of the blue beetle. Okay. Listen, slap some life in the third eye there. Why don't I plant a bomb under that dynamo over there? Sure. Hey, slit eyes. Snap out of it. Come on, come on, fuck. We're getting out of here. Oh, what happened? Did the place blow up? No, the blue beetle sucked you. Well, where is he? Lying there. Gimpy plugged him. Oh, good work. Where's Gimpy? Plant that dynamite under those dynamos. Here he comes now. Come on, let's go. I lit the fuse. It won't be long now. Here, here. Give me a hand with the blue beetle. Right, let's make it snappy. I don't want to be around when a dynamite goes off. What about the watchman? He'll have to take his chances. We ain't got room for him. Okay, come on, let's go. I cut a short food. What will happen to the blue beetle when the octopus gets him in his power? Will that be the end of the blue beetle? How can the police protect the citizens of this vast city against the depredations of this ruthless band of arch criminals? night long in the inky darkness caused by the disabled powerhouse, a band of hoodlums and underworld characters ravaged the city, bombing buildings, setting fires and robbing banks and jewelry stores. The police and fire departments did heroic work trying to stem the tide of terrorism. In the morning, the aroused populace stormed the doors of city hall, demanding protection. Uh, hey, well, where's the mayor? Why don't you do something? Yes, our uh, homes and stores are being looted. Our factories are being dynamited. Burn. What's the police doing about it, huh? Where's the commissioner? Why don't we take taxes? Look, look, the doors are open. Hey, uh, there's, there's the mayor's secretary. Yes, yes well, the mayor's with Quiet, quiet, everybody. Yeah, the mayor's going to speak. Hello, citizens. I know you have put in a terrible night. Oh, we have. Quiet, quiet. Let the mayor talk. Many of you have lost valuables. Some of you have had your shops broken into or your factories burned by the members of this band of money-mad cutthroats. Yes, you're right, 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 right. yes, my friends, you all have suffered losses. I, too, have suffered a great loss. You? Last night, at about nine o'clock, my young son was kidnapped. And so when I say to you, my fellow citizens, that I shall leave no stone unturned to apprehend these malefactors. I am sure you will believe me and be patient with me and the commissioner of police. Hey, hey, Mr. Mayor, how about sparing me in as a deputy? Yes, me too. I, I was in the army. I can shoot. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, my friend. See, but I got two grandsons. Thank you. I suppose there are some of you who would like to assist in this drive. And if there are, report to the commissioner at police headquarters. He can use every fighting man he can get. <laughs> now, now I must get back to my office and plan a campaign that will rid this city forever of this criminal scum. <laughs> Throughout the city, the movement grew to join with the police in running down the dynamiters, arsonists, and robbers. Repairs were rushed on the power plant so that by nightfall the city might again be illuminated. Meanwhile, in an iron-walled room of a secret hiding place, on an island far beyond the city's outskirts, the Blue Beetle is slowly regaining consciousness. Oh. Oh, what a head. And have I gimpy through, just graze my temple Half an inch to the right, and there's been no more blue beetle. Hello, mister. Uh, hello, Sonny. What are you doing here? Well, the men brought me. Aren't you Tom Rogers, the mayor's son? That's right. And you're the blue beetle. Yes, Tom, I'm the blue beetle. Well, then I'm not scared anymore. Well, of course you're not. We'll outwit these scoundrels yet. You and me together. Gee. Tom, I want you to help me. Me help the blue beetle? Gee. Now look, Tom, here's my plan. I want you to... In an adjoining room, the octopus, mastermind of this devilish scheme to systematically drain the great city of its wealth, is conferring with his henchmen. You have done very well so far. We already have $500,000 in cash and many jewels worth fabulous sums. In addition... We have two aces in the hole. You mean the mayor's kid and... And the blue beetle. We can get a big price for the kid, but the blue beetle ain't worth nothing. You forget, Gimpy. He wears a suit of impenetrable blue chain armor that is flexible as silk and stronger than steel. So what? With that armor and the magic ray, I can become the blue beetle. Gee, gee, then you become invulnerable like the blue beetle. Exactly, Gimpy. <laughs> But first, we must dispose of... Oh, that kid's crying again. Go in and make him shut up, Monty. Okay, boss, I'll shut up. up. What's eating you, kid? There's a dead man over there on that cot. Don't tell me the blue beetle's croak. I'll have a look. The blue beetle. Why, he ain't dead. Oh. The blue beetle is more alive than ever. So the kid double-crossed me. Why, I'll... No, you won't. <coughs> you white-livered skunk, because I'm going to... Help me. 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 Help You've got no hammer to throw this time. Back him good, Blue Beetle. Boy, right on the button. Now for the octopus. Look out, Blue Beetle. Behind you. There we are, Blue Beetle. <laughs> Thought you had me, didn't you? Well, you'll never get out of here alive. This electric ray gun will burn you to a crisp in that steel armor. Stop that, mister. You can't do that to the Blue Shut Beetle. Shut up, kid, or I'll bless you, too. Say your prayers, Blue Beetle, because... Oh, no, you're not. That was good work, Tom. We're just in time with that chair leg. Pick up that electric ray gun. We'll go after the octopus. Right with you, Blue Beetle. Now you stay in back of me. I don't want you to get hurt. Here we go. He's disappeared. There he goes. Look through the window there. See him? He's running to the dock. Yes, he's getting into an outboard motorboat. Come on, let's go. Oh, jeez. He got away from it. Not yet, he hasn't. Well, what are you going to do? Take off my armor and swim after him. Can you swim fast enough to catch him? This is one time I'll find out. Here I go. Gee, look at him go. Oh, boy, can that blue beetle swim? The octopus is shooting at him. The blue beetle's still swimming after the boat. He's gaining. Boy, can he swim. He's gaining. The octopus is out of bullets. 
The blue beetle's gaining on him all the time. Boy, he, he's caught the boat. He's climbing in the stern of the boat. No, no, he's turning the boat over. There goes the octopus right into the water. Oh, I can't swim. Gee, the octopus can't swim. He's calling for help. Look at the blue beetle. She's diving under the upset boat. Now, now he's turning the boat over right side up. Gee, Mr. Blue Beetle is sure strong. Now he's going to rescue the octopus. Look at those strokes he takes. There, there, he's got the octopus. Ah, he should have let him drown. He, he's hauling him up into the boat. Now, now he's starting the motor up. He's turning around the boat, and, and here he comes. Boy, boy. Gee, Blue Beetle, that was swell. So, so what about the octopus? Is he... No, no, he's not dead. He's just suffering from immersion. But suppose you tie him up while I get dressed. He's harmless now. I've got his gun. He certainly was yellow, wasn't he? When he ran out of bullets and you ducked him. All gangsters are yellow and they haven't got a gun. He's no exception. Well, what are you going to do now? Going to put on my blue armor, take you back to the city limits in that boat and phone the police. But what about the gangsters in the house there? They can't get off the island. We've got the only boat, and it's too far to swim to the mainland. Mr. Mr. Blue Beetle, you've done an awful lot for me, saving me from those kidnappers and everything. Oh, that's nothing, Tom. Well, my father will pay you a big reward. The Blue Beetle seeks no reward, Tom. What he does, he does for humanity. Say, would you do me one more favor? Certainly, if I can. What is it? Would you give me that Blue Beetle off your helmet? <laughs> Here you are, Tom. A souvenir to remember the Blue Beetle by. Gee, Blue Beetle, you're swell. And so the Blue Beetle brought another gang of criminals to justice, turning them over to the police, but himself remaining hidden behind the disguise of the Blue Beetle. Later that day, after setting Tom, the mayor's son, ashore at the city dock, and phoning the police where to find the octopus and his cohorts, he disappeared as the Blue Beetle to turn up later at Dr. Fran's little apothecary shop as patrolman Dan Garrett. Do you say, Dan, the octopus was about to shoot you with this electric ray gun you brought back with you? Yes. He threatened to burn me to a crisp in my metal armor. Oh, what a fiendish idea. But very ingenious. I'd have been roasted alive without a clue as to the cause of my death if it... It hadn't have been for young Tom Rogers sneaking from behind and knocking Slut Eye out with that chair leg. Yes, yes. Well, I, I'd better invent a non-conductive lining for your Blue Beetle armor just in case you run into another electric ray gun. That's a swell idea. You know, Doc, if I had the... Uh, just a minute, Dan. Hello? Hello. This is Mannigan. Is Danny there? Yes, yes. Uh, just a minute. Uh, it's for you, Dan. Oh, thanks, Doc. Hello, Dan Garrett speaking. Hey, Danny, you're one of the police headquarters immediately. Me and you are going to swell new assignment. Oh, yes, where? Out at John Doerr's carnival. Well, what's up? Some slot machine racketeers are trying to make John Doerr install some crooked slot machines. Okay, Mannequin, I'll be right over. I've got to get going, Doc. It's a new assignment. Never a dull moment in this business. Well, you said you craved action. Yeah. Well, so long, Doc. I may be seeing you tonight. <laughs> What will develop from Patrolman Dan Garrett's next assignment? Will the Blue Beetle be called into action against the crooked slot machine racketeers? Can the Blue Beetle protect amusement seekers against dishonest exploitation? These questions will be answered in the next episode of The Blue Beetle. copyrighted Fox feature, appearing in Mystery Men Comics Magazine and the Blue Beetle Magazine, on sale at your newsstand. The Blue Beetle is on the air twice a week on this same station. 
consult the broadcast schedule in your local newspapers. And don't forget to listen... Blue Beetle.